Have you ever heard how some people feed Venus flytraps raw chicken? Well, the people who grow these plants say it's a terrible thing to do. So who's right? Well, today I have some chicken, beef, pork and fish, both raw and cooked, so that we can find out who's right together. And who knows, maybe our plants will grow really well, or maybe they'll just end up rotting away. And there's no better way of finding out than opening them up at the end of the experiment. Now the thing that most people get wrong is what this fly is doing right here. It's moving, and any meat we feed the plants doesn't. All Venus flytraps have trigger hairs inside of their mouths, and if the hairs don't get touched, it won't close. So unlike that fly which keeps touching the hairs while moving around, I have to manually touch all of the hairs to make sure that the plant eats. And just two days later, the plants are already reacting to the meat we've given them. Just like this trap that has completely sealed around the fly it ate, all of the other traps have sealed around their food too. But one of them has already started drooling. Oh, that's disgusting. And what's worse than drool? Solid drool. This trap was fed raw chicken, and whatever it has done to this trap is not normal. Venus flytraps don't leak like this, especially when they have formed their seal like all the plants have. My guess is that the enzymes in the trap has reacted with the chicken juice and made it solid. Regardless, this was just the first of many things that happened to the plants. Just four days later, we see our first sign of what fish can do to a plant. And this is actually the cooked fish, so maybe sushi isn't as gross as some people think. Yet on day five, cooked beef started his trend of breaking stereotypes. People always say how an open trap that is digesting food ends up rotting away. But since day one, this guy hasn't cared that his trap is half open. But not all of the meat is as nice as the beef. It's like, like carcass. It's disgusting. I don't even know how to explain that. It's like death. It's really, really gross. And obviously inside the room, I'm busy doing a thumbnail with these plants here. You know, I need them in here because of the lighting and all, but damn, that stinks, man. None of the other ones have the smell. The fish one kind of smells a little bit, but nothing as bad as the chicken. That's crazy. But this was only the first sign of what was to come. You can actually now see there's mold growing out of this plant here, all of this mold. Look at that, it's disgusting. And obviously liquid coming out of the sides of it too. Oh, that's just really disgusting. Even the other trap, you can see the mold developing just in there, really gross. And this is actually the plant that ate the fly. Absolutely no problems, healthy trap, no problems at all. Now the reason the chicken has become moldy is because it rots very quickly. It has a lot of bacteria on it, which is why we need to cook it so well before we eat it. But the next one has started rotting because it's pretty high in fat. Our pork plant is doing all right. Maybe a bit of mold there, but nothing, nothing major. But on this side, you can see that there's actually juices leaking out and the plant is now starting to burn on the sides here. As you saw, the cooked pork hasn't affected the plant yet, but this raw pork has. Also has a bit of mold growing just there. Venus flytrap enzymes can't digest the amount of fat that is found in pork, but when you cook it, all of the fat inside that meat actually comes out, which is why that first trap seems all right for now. Yet the fish has been acting a bit strange. Completely killing off this little trap here. All of this juice is coming out, it's black, it's rotting the plants away. But on this side you can see it's not as bad, but there is still a little bit of mold forming inside of there. There are different reasons as to why fish would go off so quick. Fish breaks down much quicker than all the other meats, especially cooked fish, as cooking it actually breaks down the protein more than if you left it raw. But I'm not an expert on microbiology, so maybe one of you guys can let me know in the comments. Regardless, we still have beef, which is proving to be the best option for now. You can see there's a little bit of mold growing in here too but the actual trap is fine. And on this side, you can see that it's actually becoming liquid and starting to leak out to the top. 
This plant didn't have a proper seal, but as you can tell, the other ones that do have seals have started to rot, and this one hasn't. So, but seals don't always mean everything. As most of us know, beef doesn't let much bacteria into it. And the fact that this beef has been exposed to the air for this long and not had any problems just proves this more. But what will these plants look like after another week of digestion? And guys, this is when I started to get nervous about opening up the traps at the end of this experiment. After nearly two weeks, the raw fish is starting to cause this trap to go brown. And you can even see where the bacteria has started growing at the top of the trap. But this is nothing compared to the cooked fish. This trap is rotting away in pieces. I have never seen anything like this before, but I can only guess that these black pieces is where the bacteria is attacking the trap. The green part is firm, but the black parts are soggy. Yet I actually think the chicken is worse. You can see just how much the mold is starting to grow in the trap with the raw chicken. But this is nothing compared to the cooked chicken. This trap is coated in mold and is now thick enough for me to pull pieces off. The mold in this trap has had quite a while to become this fluffy, so it's only a matter of time until the trap with raw chicken becomes like this too. Yet the trap with pork is becoming quite interesting. Not only is the trap that ate the cooked pork looking actually really good, the trap that had the raw pork that is high in fat has started to turn yellow and orange. The liquid that came out of it earlier has now turned solid and the burn that started a week ago has become brown and black. Now although this little trap is starting to die off, you've got to admit that it does look kinda cool. Almost as cool as the beef. This trap that ate the raw beef honestly looks perfectly healthy. There is a little bit of liquid coming out here, but this isn't too serious for now. But remember the trap that wasn't closed properly? Look at him now! It seems to have digested the cooked beef enough that it has actually managed to slide around the food and make a seal. And although the bottom of this trap is starting to die off, I think this is just because it is an old trap and that is normal for them. However, just one day later, we get the biggest sign that this isn't something anyone should be doing. The trap that has eaten the fly has started to open but none of the others have. Aside from half of them not being able to open because they are rotting away, the other reason is because Venus flytraps have a couple ways of measuring how big their food is. Their trigger hairs are one way, and the other is if their meal is ready full of nutrition. So not only do these meals make the plants rot away, but all the extra nutrition inside of it makes the plants stay closed for longer, which makes it rot away even quicker. Yet, not all the meals have turned out to be too bad for the plants. Just three days later, it's time to open them up and look at what the remains of the meals look like. All right, guys, well, I've got the gloves on and I think I'm going to do the chicken one last because it just, it looks so gross and it just smells so bad. If I open it up now, it's going to make the whole greenhouse stink and then I'm going to have to spend more time in here with that smell. Whereas if I open it up at the end, then obviously I'm done. I can just leave and the smell will go away. So looking at the plant's growth overall, they kind of look pretty much what I would expect them to look like right now. I can't really say that they've grown any more or less than what they would if it were just a normal time of the year where they didn't eat anything special. I need to show you guys something. This is the trap that ate the fly at the exact same time that we fed the plant and there are no other plants that have opened up except for one. This is our plant that ate the pork. This is the raw pork and this is the cooked pork. You can see it's actually opening back up all by itself. So let's actually see what's remaining in here. Oh, that is so gross. So you can see there's all this fatty oil coming out. So you can see there are some pieces that didn't digest like the skin of the pork. You can see there is mold starting to grow in here. So this obviously <laughs> Not really a good thing, but it is very surprising that this trap is the only one that has opened up by itself and it actually doesn't look too bad compared to some of the others we're about to see, like this pork back here. This is the 
raw pork, which is, as you might remember, high in fats, which is not good for the plant. So let's open it up and... Oh. Yeah, guys. That's really gross. Nothing's really been digested. The entire plant's rotten. I'm glad that this doesn't really have a smell, but the, the whole trap here is just completely falling apart. Look at that, guys. Very sad. Now, this is the fish plant. This is the cooked fish on the right, which has just been really bad this entire time. And it, it just broke off right there. And this here is the raw fish. You can see it's just rotting on the back here. You can see it's breaking apart. Look at that. Just rotten juices. There it is, guys. It, it doesn't smell very pleasant. It smells like rotten fish. Yeah, look at that. It did get it down from little strands of fish into a little, like a fish paste now. So this trap is now actually dried out. But here you have it. It looks pretty much the same as the day it went in. Not good. Okay, well, let's move on to the beef, which has actually turned out to be quite surprising to me. It is one of the healthiest looking traps for both the cooked and raw beef. But as you can see, I just opened this one up slightly and there's juices coming out of there. Oh, look at that guys, that's so gross. But you can see that this beef has actually been turned into juice and it's no longer a solid anymore, guys. But I absolutely do not recommend doing this because it's still causing the plant to start rotting and it's not that good for the plant. You can see there's some mold growing here at the back. Look at that. See this mold growing? And do you really want all that gross juice? No, don't think so. But let's take a look at the cooked beef. As you can see, it's also starting to get moldy. The bottom of it is starting to rot away. It's all soft and slimy there. So let's open this up. Oh, that's so gross. Yeah, guys, this doesn't smell very good, but this one, this cooked beef has not been digested nearly as much as the raw beef. I'm not too sure what the reason for that might be. Oh, but yeah, it does stink, guys. I'm going to close this up and put this aside. And I am going to get the chicken one ready and brace myself for the stench. So this is our raw chicken trap here. You can see that there is mold developing there. I'm really not looking forward to this, guys, but, you know, no better time than now. I hope me dealing with the stench earns at least a like from you because this reeks. You can see the juices. Oh, no. Oh, 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 that stinks, guys. Okay, look, you can see the juice there from the raw chicken. This is, it's soft, so it has digested a little bit, but really not as much as the beef has. That's just, guys, this really, it stinks really bad. Of course, if you're a plumber, you're probably laughing at me, and this is next to nothing for you, but this is, this smells like death. This one's gonna be the killer. Look at that, all this mold. The plant is rotting, It's the leaves are soft. I can pull this mold off. So what I've just noticed from this plant by taking this mold off, this is probably the only plant where the entire trap is just soggy. Let's get in there. There we go. And that is our cooked chicken, guys. You can see that it's pretty much the same as a raw chicken. It is just not being digested by the plant. The plant does not like this. I can't even grab this this chicken out. That went from a solid piece of hard cooked chicken to stinky goop, guys. So I'm gonna now open up the greenhouse and take a moment to get my breath back. At the start of this experiment, I really hoped that we would only sacrifice a few fly traps and possibly learn a new way of feeding these plants. But as it turns out, the growers of these plants are right. Just let the plants catch their own food and never feed human foods to a Venus flytrap. But what if you fed a human to a Venus flytrap? Well, Karen lets a flytrap digest her tongue for an entire hour and that video is on screen for you right now to watch. Please subscribe to the channel if you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.